Hey guys, welcome back. It is the Dr. Cloud Show and we are on once again, um, right here from sunny Southern California. I hope you're having a good day. I've been um, on the webinar world this morning and you probably have too with Zoom meetings and talking to everybody that you work with and all of that. And you know, it's good to see right now. Um, it's good to see, it's good to see people, you know, in the midst of, we have got a lot of pain, obviously, going on. We got a lot of conflict. There's a lot of stuff happening out there. But at the same time, there are a lot of people that, that are coming together. They're coming together. They're locking arms. They're solving problems. They're helping each other. They're supporting each other. And one of the things that I'm seeing out there in my work with, with organizations and businesses is something that I wanted to pass on to you. Um, before I do that, I should give out our number because this is the hour where you get to call in and we get to talk. And because you do that, thank you callers. Thank you guys. You're the heroes here because you do that. Other people get to learn from you. And that's one of the great things about life. When we do it as a tribe, when we do it together, you know, it's, 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 it's a village, right? We come together and go through this journey together. No one person's got all the answers. We learn from each other and we help each other. We model for each other. And that's what I love about um, you calling in because people can learn from you. People can help you. One of the great things about this that I've been, been seeing um, is, you know, just on, I tend to go, you know, Facebook, it seems like, um, and maybe that's where the comments are e easiest to read. I, I, I tend to go there in, l later in the day when I get a, a little bit of a break and kind of check out what's happening around the show. And you guys, you're, you're forming such a great community and you're giving so much encouragement, and wisdom, and coaching to each other and differing opinions. It's just fantastic. So way to go. Um, speaking of the callers, 844-940-2774 is our number 844-940-2774 to get on the air with us. Um, if you can't get on the air and you're listening later, that's what we're here for 24 seven. You got insomnia in the quarantine, just pull up one of the programs and we'll all learn something. But if you can call 844-940-2774. Okay, so one of the things I was gonna say that we can all learn um, from, from what I'm seeing out there, um, for those of you who, who don't know me, I, I'm a clinical psychologist. Um, so I've spent years and years and years in the clinical world and all the things that, you know, depressions and anxieties and addictions and all that stuff we all, you know, have to deal with, right? Help other people with. But also another another big aspect of, of what I do is, is in the leadership and performance world, working with CEOs and businesses and companies. And, and this morning I had the opportunity um, to see something over and over and over for some reason, you know, a lot of different situations that I think we can all learn from this. All right. And here's what it is. There you're seeing a lot of, a lot of businesses out there, a lot of organizations and teams. And what they're doing is, it's like this, you know, if this is a timeline, if you're watching here on the screen, so you got this timeline and we, we came into this pandemic and here's where we are in this, you know, right here, right? This is where we are. So this is what we got to deal with. Well, what a leader has to do is have two sets of eyes and be looking at what we're doing now, what we're doing. And we got to keep our business going, right? We got to keep our organization going. And also while we're doing that, what they're finding is, a lot of the stuff we brought into this, our old ways of doing things, don't fit right now. And so we're getting rid of those. And we're only doing what's really, really important. We're prioritizing the most essential life-giving things to our business and to this organization and these teams and our customers. So we're really getting, getting smart about what's important. And then what we're doing is we're learning some new ways of doing that. Are you ready for this? Now watch the visuals on this, where this is going to drop off and we're going to go forward and we're going to leave some old ways behind that don't fit anymore. 
And we didn't even know they didn't fit because we had just been doing them all the time. That's just the way we've always done it. Well, the pandemic has forced us to do things in a new and a different way. And you know what? That's better. So let's take that forward. So I want you to look at your life like that. Okay, put on this hat. You're the CEO of your life, right? And actually, that's, um, that's, you know, I come from a faith world as well as a science world. And that's pretty much what God says to us. I've put you in charge here. You know, remember the Garden of Eden? You're to subdue and rule. I've given you all these gifts and talents and brains, and you're to create something, and you're to, you're to run your life, and you're to have self-control, and you are a steward, like the parable of the talent says. It's like, you know, you're the CEO of this thing called your life, and, you know, then God's the, the board of directors. <laughs> so he's above all that, but we got to run it. So I want you to look at it that way, okay? And look at your life. And what are some practices that maybe it's time to get rid of? What business strategies have to go away? What product lines? What meetings? Wrote a book called Necessary Endings, where different seasons require different things. And there's some things that don't fit anymore. And I've learned these new ways. And that's where I'm going to pour my time and energy and resources in going to the future. So when you look at your life, you look at your past patterns. How are you running this, this business called you clinically? What were patterns of health practices or, or managing your, your emotional problems or anxieties or depressions? And in here, you've learned some new patterns or need to establish some new patterns. And now, this isn't only for the pandemic. These are going to be new ways that I carry forward in life. And I know a lot of people are doing that, and it's really cool to see. But I want you to think about it on the personal side of things. New practices, new ways, clinically, relationally, performance-wise, reaching dreams and goals. You know, this radio show came exactly from that. Exactly from that's where it came from. I had a schedule disappear. Because I go out and speak and do events, and that's how I talk to people a lot and communicate, and all that was gone. And I found myself in here, and and you know we were sitting around thinking, okay, so how do we do what we do now in a new way? And one of the things I thought of was, well, why can't we use technology and figure out a way to talk to people? Well, let's do it. Let's start a radio show, and we did that. I don't know if it's going to work or not. If you share it and people join it, we're going to take this forward if it builds an audience. So I do need you to share it. But the point is that that we all have to be thinking, what's new and different about what's new and different here? And how can I be new and different and do new things differently and different things in a new way to create a life going forward? Let's do that. Let's do that. You can do that. This is a scene in a much longer movie called Your Life. So you're the script writer in that scene on Netflix, that little, one little box where this is that scene. It's a long movie. You're the script writer, and the character is you. <laughs> How are you going to write the script for that character called you to operate in this scene right now so the movie ends up in a different place? You get to do that. You get to do that. As a person of faith, I love that passage. You know, some Proverbs, it says that a person's path, the direction of the script, where it's going, what you want to do, that path originates in your heart, and then God directs your steps. So we, in this time, we have to find, what do we care about? What, what, do, I, what do I want to, to see happen in my life in those three areas? What's my vision for that? And then get moving from what's in your heart <clears throat> and start to put, you know, actions to that and strategies. And then God will open doors and close doors and bring, bring opportunities and take others away. And he directs our steps. But it's got to start with your heart. So get in touch with that heart. 
Get in touch with those passions. Get in touch with those desires. And let's bring them into fruition for the future. Okay, come join me. 844-940-2774. We're going to go um, to the phones. And um, I want to remind you, um, if you can't call in, you know, shows here 24-7. Tune in any day that you can't be here live. Watch it and pass it on to your friends. Okay, let's go to the phones. 844-940-2774. We're going to talk to Hannah, who um, is normally, like, depending on the time of day, like, <laughs> impossible if I wanted to go visit Hannah. Because I'm in L.A. She's in Orange County. Usually there's traffic on the 405. But today, Hannah, I could get down there like that. If, if, isn't this pandemic different for Southern California and the traffic if you've been outside? I have. I'm limiting it. But um, I, I get you what you're saying. It's great. Now, I don't hear an Orange County accent there. I hear, <laughs> I hear somebody that sounds like you down there from the south where I'm from. <laughs> you would be right. I'm from uh, North Carolina, but I've been in the L.A. area for almost 10 years. Well, that makes you a native. So tell me your question. How can I help you? Um, I'll try to be su as succinct as I can. Um, I have a good friend. We've been friends for, I think, about four years. I value her friendship, but she has a tendency to try to be controlling in our relationship and i'm struggling now what is with what is what does controlling mean what does that mean what does she do what are the actions one thing is that she tends to push her point of view onto me including with things from my personal life not just you know, um, things that don't have directly to do with me. Okay, get, get, give me an example. I'm going to be you. You're her. Uh -huh. Hey, Susie, how are you doing today? And she's going to say what? Hi. Um, well, one thing, we pray together on a regular basis. Wait a minute. No, 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 no. Don't, don't go into the – I want you to stay, in, do the, role stay in the script here. Stay in the role play. <laughs> hey, Susie, what's happening? <laughs> Oh, not much. I was thinking um, what you said about wanting to preserve your retirement savings and not spend those despite yeah. your long-term unemployment. Uh, God never said that. He never promised us a retirement savings. <laughs> well, Susie, I don't know. Um, I don't know what Bible you're reading. Mine says a lot of things about that. It says, go, go to the ant who stores up in the winter for the future. And yes. Joseph did it for five years because the famine was coming. I mean, I could go on and on and on, but I just don't, I don't know the Bible you're reading. So I, I, I disagree, but, but what else is happening? Um, gosh, I'm trying to think of specific examples, but um, oh, let me think. Well, she's doing it enough for you for you to call me. There's got to be a million. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. One is that um, because of my long-term unemployment, I'll bring that a lot to when we pray or, you know, just as friends talking and really want just empathy, not for her to give her take on it um, well, give, and give me often give, give, give me another take besides god doesn't say the retirement thing mm -hmm. uh, god's got this um you're i, I know you're gonna ha get a job soon uh that sort of thing all about it okay. being positive nothing to worry about okay so you you want somebody can be present with you and say Gosh, I can see how hard this is, and I mean, I've, I've been watching you, and you're. This is hard. I really feel for you and where you are. That's right. what you want from her, right? Okay. Yeah, and I. So on numerous occasions, I've tried to communicate it. Okay, 
So um, let me give you a, I just saw my daughter Lucy go through the uh, background there. Hey, Lucy, come wave at us. I don't think she heard me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's the thing about radio and a lockdown. You don't know how big the studio is and who's going to walk through. Um, right. So, so um, can I ask you a question? Yes. I have, I have friends of all different kinds, right? Um, mm. And I've got some friends who are really empathic and really caring. And right. when I need a little, you know, nourishment and nurturance and somebody to understand, I dial that number. Mm -hmm. If I need somebody who's going to make me laugh because they're wacko, I dial a different number. <laughs> some of my you. nurturing, some of my nurturing people are not very entertaining or very funny. So I don't call them if I'm looking to be entertained. And I certainly don't call the whack jobs for care. Mm -hmm. So if right. you've taught, the first thing I was going to suggest is if you ever talk to her about, you know, sometimes I just want, I don't really need advice. I just need you to be with me and understand and know that you're in my corner and pulling for me. And I don't really need advice. Now I was going to suggest that, but you said you've already tried that, right? So what I would tend to do is, is kind of figure out, you know, maybe I say this a lot, you know, Dogs don't meow, they bark, and cats mm -hmm. don't bark, they meow. And when we try to get our dogs to meow, it doesn't work out well. So if you thought about right. maybe this isn't the person you share your pain with, you can pray about stuff or, mm -hmm. you know, you know, go, go down there on the beach and rollerblade on the boardwalk, but this might not be your nurturing source. Right. I, I, I get that. Um, I do think I need to build up my differentiation and boundary skills at, at the same time that I, I totally yeah. agree with what you're saying. Another That's what thing I would is that I again. have. Okay. You know, yeah, there, there, there's an old with, saying I love you can't teach a pig to sing because the mm -hmm. music's bad. Music's bad. It really frustrates the pig. <laughs> And so we just don't try to do that. If you've tried, I mean, I'm I'm not against people growing and obviously, and we share with each other and teaching people, learn new skills, or maybe even, even, even ask her to join a support group where other people can sort of model this, all of that. I'm just saying you need to have these needs met and find somebody that can do it. So yeah, you, you started to say one more thing and then I got to get to some other callers, but what, what was your second question? Well, the, the other piece of it, of course, these things are always, a lot of times more complicated is that I have struggled um, long term um, with developing and maintaining intimate relationships. So I'm I need more friends. I need a bigger circle yeah. like you're talking that's about. But that's just a piece of it. Yeah. OK, well, let, let, let me give you a little just thought on that. OK, and then, okay. then I got to. I got to go some other college and thank you for bringing me a good Southern accent into my foreign land here that I live in <laughs> called Southern California. You're quite welcome. If you could drop, drop some chicken fried steak and, and biscuits by, I'd appreciate that too. So <laughs> let, let me, um, I'll leave you with this. Um, on the second part of that, whenever we struggle in doing something naturally, Okay, I'm going to say that again. Whenever we struggle in doing something naturally, then probably we're not going to be able to do it naturally. What we've got to do is we've got to join it where somebody else has already created it and it's structured and it's there for that purpose. All right, great example of this. Many people want to start their own business. They really have never developed the skills that they could start and run a business. And they try that without ever really having the practice it needs to be able to pull that off. And it's not going to work. What is better is they should join the structure of an existing business that would allow them to do their gifts and do well and work for somebody that can do that. And within that structure, then learn the skills or on the side, join 
you know, a small business mentoring program or something to get those skills. Another or another example, if somebody can't get sober on their own, then and they can't find their friends because they tell their talk to their friends like your friends and the friends give bad advice on how to get sober. Then what do they do? They go join a structured program that hangs out a shingle and says, we're here for you to help you get sober. So back to you, you need you need some intimate support systems. And that's not happening naturally, right? You're not creating on your own. That's fine. There's reasons for that. There's ways we learn to do that. But until then, find a good support group. Find a good, you know, recovery system in a church. A good, there's, there's, you live in Orange County. I don't know anywhere in the world that probably has the plethora of available existing support networks. I mean, there's some great churches down there, you know. Mariner's Church and Grace and Saddleback and there's a ton of them. Go on their websites and just see what kind of intimate support groups do they have that you can join and then we build out from there. Okay? Start small. Start structured. Start with experienced people. Gain the skills and then it grows. Thank you for your call. 844-940-2774. 844-940-2774. I'm going to thank you again, callers, because you make this all work. What did we just learn? We just learned two great principles in life. And we I say learn them. You probably already knew this, but we got them highlighted, right? Which is three great principles. One is in a relationship, when something isn't working, we address that until we find, we have number one, address it. Tell her to give you some empathy. If she can't or refuses to, then we don't continue to bang our heads up against the wall thinking we're going to get something that doesn't exist. What we do is we turn to other resources to find that, right? That's one principle. Second principle is when there's something we need and we're not finding it on our own, we join something structured that exists for that purpose. That way we don't stay stuck. Yesterday we had a bunch of dating calls. All right. Some people, they have dates coming out of their ears. They just attract people like like flies. I'm not kidding. There are just people like that. And it doesn't have to do with a lot of the things that you most people think it has to do with. It's not how hot your body is or, you know, if your Ferrari is red enough or you got this. You know what? It's much more. It's much more dynamic and interpersonal than that. It is. But other people. For lots of different reasons, shyness, introversion, maybe some woundedness, anxiety, whatever, you got burned before, then the system is a little shut down, right? And so what do we talk about with some people very successfully on on previous calls? What do they do in dating? They've got to do the second principle. Go join something that's structured to help them reach that goal. So don't stay stuck either in trying to get what did I say? A dog to meow. Or don't stay stuck swimming and trying to, you know, tread water when what you and you can't swim when you need a raft to hold on to. That's what we all do in life. Things we can't do on our own, we get help. Things that aren't working, we decide gonna try something different. Okay, this is the Dr. Cloud Show, 844-940-2774. Um, Speaking of doing things different and joining a structured program, I want to bang my head and invite you guys to join Boundaries.me. We have been getting so, and I was on the Facebook um, comments just in the last um, few nights, and so many people are saying, I joined Boundaries.me and in a couple of weeks, it's changed a bunch of different things. I love the community, all of that. What Boundaries.me is, the things you hear on this show, the kind of things we talk about, the topics, all of that, Boundaries.me is an online place where you can subscribe and come on there. And on demand, I've got 60-something little courses on all the things we talk about in this program. And you also can join a community there, and there's different you know, groups and all that where you can help each other. But much more detail, obviously, than we can go into on a radio show. But um, a lot of information, we're always adding. You subscribe, and so we keep adding. And some people have been on there for, you know, a couple of years now. I think that's how long I've been doing it. Boundaries.me. Come join us. It's great. Okay, let's go back to the phones. Um, I'm going to give the number again, 
940-2774. And while I'm thinking about all that, a quick shout out to my team. And I appreciate you guys shouting out to them as well as you do on some of the platforms. Um, Jessica and Albie and Greg, you guys are rock stars. You know, I sit in this room and I talk on this little phone. I'm actually, you know, this is a phone. <laughs> but they put all the technology together that makes that work. So you guys rock. Okay, let's go back. Um, Bethany from South Florida is calling us, and she was has a question about supportive relationships and with a friend. So, Bethany, are you there? Yes. Hi, I'm here. How are you? Good. How are you? Well, I'm good. Are you? Um, are you? You said you're in South Florida. Are you? You down in the Miami world? I am on the west part of um southwest part of florida oh so you're on the gulf yes the gulf Coast. you've got you've got the good shrimp over there right nah. <laughs> fried yes we do it must be it is lunchtime right there I haven't eaten i keep talking about food okay so you didn't call to talk about that why t- tell me what's up what is your question i love talking about food though <laughs> <laughs> um my question is um I have recently realized that um, I I never I knew that I I was trying to make other people happy. Um, I cared about other people, but I didn't realize I'm 35 now, and it just kind of hit me. And I've started studying and meeting a counselor and reading books, and I'm realizing that this is something um, called codependency and caretaking and, and all of these things. So I'm realizing that I. Good for you. Way to go. Some people never yeah. wake up and get that. I'll, I'll never forget this. <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I have to tell you one, one funny story about co- codependency. I was doing a group one time. It was actually in a, in a hospital. <clears throat> and right in the middle of the group, this lady, literally, she stands up in her, in her chair and she says, I get it. This codependency thing. I'm tired of my mother running my life and I'm not going to allow her to do that anymore. And I'm 68 years old. (laughs) You know, we, we applauded her at 68 for having the wake up call, but you've done it way before then. Some people don't get it till way late. So congratulations. You've had the first step. You got an awakening. Yeah. So now going from there, what do we do? I am rescuer. I try to help people. I try to solve problems. You know all those words. Um, So I have friends, um, you know, going through different things. And my approach when they tell me a problem is I immediately say, well, what have you done? Um, What can we do? Um, I try to offer advice and suggestions. Wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. Did you, did you, I'm going to make you, I'm going to play guardian of your enabler life here. Okay, I'm a drone. Yeah. If I hovered over your head <laughs> and I heard you say, what can we do? I would go, error, 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 error. Why don't you say, <laughs> what can you do? Did you notice how the we word just slipped in there? It's in your software. Well, there's a side story about that. I know you don't have time for that, but... <laughs> Up until a few okay. days ago, I probably would have said, what would you do? What what have you done and what could you do about it? But um, I've had well, some I, like the, I love with, those questions. That, that, those are not enabling questions at all. <laughs> well, good. <laughs> unless you feel responsible to do the doing or unless you feel responsible mm-hmm. for them if they choose to not do the doing, then it gets enabling. Right. Yeah, well, I do. I feel like I need to fix people and help them and solve all their, their problems are my responsibility. That's what I'm realizing and all this studying I'm doing. Yes. It's great. Um, yeah. Great, great, great. So I, I've been talking to my counselor about this and she helped me point out, or she pointed out to me that um, maybe I'm giving advice to people and offering suggestions when they never even asked for it. And I asked her, like, what things could I say then instead of when someone gives me a problem, instead of me saying, well, here's the bright side and here's what you could do about it. Maybe I should say things like, I don't know, how does that make you feel? What could you do about that? Those kind of things. Yeah. 
just um, be with somebody instead of be responsible for somebody. Mm -hmm. So what if, um, is there a question in there? That sounds like great advice. I guess my question is, what are things kind of like those two things that I, that I said, like, what are things that I could say or have okay. a conversation with someone about that are support? I want to focus on supporting the person, but not helping fix their problem. That's great. Okay. You, you be the person I'm going to be you. Okay. Okay. Um, are you starting? Am I starting? You're starting. <laughs> well, I can start. Okay. It. I, I, hey, Susie, how are you? What's going on? Hi. Um, well, you know, I have um, some bills coming up and and I am really struggling to get them paid. That's hard. That's really hard. <laughs> well, um, I don't know what I'm going to do about it. Wow. What are you feeling? How long has this been going on? Sounds, I mean, I've been there before. That's, that's, that's hard. Tell me more I about it. I feel like I can't get my head above water. I feel like I'm drowning. I feel like I don't know how I'm going to get out of this myself. Well, so what are you doing? I mean, what are you, how are you approaching it? Um, I kind of lose my motivation and I don't do, I just, I just get overwhelmed with my feelings and I can't, I can't move past <clears throat> how overwhelming it is. Oh, so really, I mean, that's extra hard. It's like you've got the financial problems, but also there's, it, it turns into like a, an emotional overwhelmed state too that's really hard it's like a double whammy mm -hmm. yeah it's hard <laughs> anyway yeah. i can help you um just support me be there for me um what would that look love like? me and support me i do love you i'm with you and first of all i feel for you I've been there. I can tell you a story about <laughs> last time that happened to me. I mean, it, it, you know, we're talking about you, but it's hard, but I do. I, I'll support you any way I can. So just you let me know. You need to talk or whatever. Okay. I, I'm going to hit pause here because we had to get to some other callers, but, but if you notice um, what I'm doing is, have you read the book boundaries? Yes. Okay, so you know how in, in the book I talk about boundaries are a property line. Mm -hmm. So you're standing on your property, and that property is called Bethany. Okay, Bethany's got finances, Bethany's got emotions, Bethany's got overwhelmed feelings at times, she's got friends, she's got whatever she's got. Susie does too. Okay. So now you guys are coming up to the fence like neighbors. And Susie's talking about what's going on in her yard. Now, as far as I know, Susie has not hired me to be her gardener. Right. Or remodel her house mm -hmm. or anything that goes on her property. But she is sharing it with me. We're neighbors and we're opening up the gate and we're talking to each other. Right. So if you can picture, you know, what I did with you, I really didn't climb over the fence and start fixing stuff. Mm -hmm. I let you stay separate and empathize. And I, I, right. what I would, what I think might help you here is I want you to, um, to, to read some stuff on, on listening, active listening skills. Because, okay. because that's one of the ways you can be very helpful without taking responsibility for someone. 
And when I think of active listening, and I think I think in boundaries.me, I'll ask my team, um, are you a subscriber to boundaries.me? No, I'm not yet. I've looked at it okay. and I just need to do it. It's fine. No, it's fine. I was going to say, if you were, I, I'm pretty sure we have some stuff in there on, on, on listening. But the the thing to remember about listening is the fundamental primary way that we help somebody is to show them that we're with them, our presence. And when we're present with somebody, just your being there, you've already helped relieve her stress a little bit, but I'm going to give you a little bit of things to think about. If you notice what I did was I, I addressed the emotions. Number one, I said, Mm -hmm. gosh, that's hard. And when I said that, do you remember what you did? No. You said, you're telling me about the finance. I said, that's really hard. You know, just the, I, I addressed the, the emotions of what she said. She has bills. That's really hard. That's difficult. I've been there. Now, that's all I did. And then what you did from there was that opened you up further. And then you said, yeah. And then I start to get really overwhelmed. Mm-hmm. And so. In listening, what I did was I addressed the emotions and the content. I said, well, that's even harder because not only do you have the bills, but now you got, you're feeling overwhelmed and have to, it's gotten into anxiety. That's really hard. So if you just think of being with your friends and speak to the content of what you're, they're telling you, gosh, financial struggles. That's really hard. And the emotions of it. If you just do that, a lot of times what you're going to do is you're going to find that they begin to open up and their brain starts working and that, and you're going along with them and they start to kind of solve their own problems or like you did earlier, ask some questions. So I would just think about that. Does that help? Okay. It does. I, my, I go to, trying to like encourage them and make them feel better and, yeah. you know, offering that, you know, silver lining or the positive or whatever. And, and I, it's hard for me cause I don't yeah. want to get bound, wound up in like the negative with them. And so I try to take the positive spin, but you know, if that's helpful to them, then I can do that. Yeah. A lot of times, a lot of times, and you know, there's a, <laughs> there's worlds of research. You can go read about it, you know, in listening a lot of times, Our attempts to make somebody feel better really make them feel worse because then they feel alone with it. They don't feel like it's any better. Mm -hmm. You follow me? So now, Mm -hmm. now, not only am I anxious, but I'm also, I'm also with somebody doesn't understand. And even though you do just the trying to make somebody feel better before we really connect with the pain of it, sometimes that, it doesn't really help us. So um, mm-hmm. in, anyway, I wish you were my friend. You sound like you really have a good heart and want to help people. Thank you. <laughs> so you keep doing it, Appreciate but in a way that doesn't, doesn't burn you out. Okay. Thank you for your call. Mm-hmm. Okay. Thank you. This is the doctor. Thank you. This is the Dr. Cloud show. We are um, broadcasting here live from sunny Southern California today. As always, we do this um, every day. Um, generally at one o'clock Pacific time in this period during the lockdown. And hopefully we'll keep doing it. If, you know, we continue to build an audience and people like being here every now and then we change the schedule. So you always have to watch. Um, Mostly it's at one o'clock. Let me ask our team there. When is our, when's our show on tomorrow guys? Do we have a time um, yet? We are, they are telling me um, we're at 1 PM again tomorrow Pacific time. Okay. Um, So that means, Bethany, that's four o'clock your time. Okay, so let's go um, back to the phones and um, let's talk to Angela. Angela is calling us um, from not as far as Florida, but over in Reno, Reno, Nevada. And Angela, how are you doing? How can I help you? Hi. Um, Hey. So I'm going to start with a question first, because I know that's what you end up asking anyway. Um, <laughs> what's the best way to get 
to the underlying cause of anxiety. And what's happening is um, I'm finding myself crying, and I don't know why. Um, and it's something that's been going so on is for it more, decades. Is it more sadness than anxiety? You said anxiety, but crying, um, that's sorrow and sadness and loss and pain. What, right. Which one is it? Or is it both? You know, honestly, I can't put emotions to it. I don't know. Um, okay. But the main way somebody, you experience it is is kind of unexplained crying. and You don't know why. That's how I'm experiencing it now. Um, and I'm also coming down with hives, which I know is caused by stress. Um, yeah. But in the past, it's been things like I'll be bike riding and I'll faint. <laughs> I'll feel like I'm in a faint and I have to pull over and just drop the bike. Um, and wow. it's just, I, I can't seem to put emotions to what's, to what's going on. And even talking about it, I mean, it seems like it comes, comes pretty quickly. It sounds really, really right there, painful on the surface. Right. How, how long has this been going on? Um, the crying, I'd say, just the last, you know, since we started the whole stay at home thing. Um, that's new. Did I? What's new? Or I said new, that yeah. that that's a new thing just since the pandemic. Right, that and the highest, the highest has been since the pandemic. Okay, do you, um, is there something something going on in the context of the pandemic that, are you isolated or is there something happening in the pandemic that you could point to that this is really getting to me for this reason? It's um, not really. I, I'm working from home. So, and that's not different because last year um, I had to work from home because my husband was sick and we did that for six weeks. Um, he, I'm home with him, which is kind of usual. Um, it's usual or unusual? My, um, it's unusual that I'm home with him 24 seven, but um on the weekends, we're always hanging out together. Um, okay. And is that, a good, work, is that I'm, a good connection when the two of you are together? Is that, does that feel good? Um, it's just kind of normal. It's, it's not good or bad. It just kind of is. I know that sounds, it's kind of well, like it's day in, day out life. Yeah. But do you feel, do y'all talk about things at some kind of an emotional level things that kind of you know touch your heart and you talk about your stress or your pain or any of that do you have anybody that you're talking to yeah about? we do um i see a counselor like every two, every two weeks but it seems like yeah it seems like every time it comes up or every time i have a, an appointment i seem to be in a better place so it doesn't come up and what about your circle of close relationships apart from your husband. Yeah, that's pretty much not existent. That's non existent? Right. Okay. And I'm gonna ask a couple of couple of quick questions. I wish, you know, could ask a thousand questions, but has anything happened in the last year or two that you would categorize as as a loss or any kind of painful event, loss of relationship, rejection, conflict, any other kind of losses or trauma in any way? Um, yeah, there's been a lot. There's been a lot. Um, yeah. So last well, year at this time, yeah. Last year at this time, what? Uh, my husband was going to um, radiation for cancer. Oh. Um, 
at this time? My relation. Yeah. Um, it'll be Is a he year. Okay now? Yeah, she's fine now. Yeah. Okay. Well, that was a hard year. As far as that was you know. a hard year. Okay. Let yeah. me, you know, your, your question was, what do we do when we're feeling stuff and it just comes and we don't know why there's there, there really is always a reason. You know, sometimes, and, and I'm going to get really, you know, because you don't allow a lot of time when you get, get really kind of give you a lot of bullet points to go think about here. Um, but generally, Generally, when we're talking about sadness on that spec, that end of the spectrum, there's usually, usually some sort of, of loss we're dealing with. And that doesn't have to be that we lost a person. It could even be something like you were in a period where you guys lost your normal way of life. You lost his health. Okay. And, and you had a lot of fear going on at that time. And that can even be a trigger for other losses sometimes that we might have experienced in our lives. And so sometimes you'll have, and this is, I don't know this, but it could be that you're having, this is the anniversary of that, right? And you're with him and just him. And sometimes anniversary events will trigger kind of unresolved feelings of sadnesses we might have had about something that, you know, we've already gone through or, triggers other kind of losses. So I would want you to talk with your counselor. You know, you said it doesn't come up when you're with your counselor, which is interesting because I don't know why that is. It may even be that if you're isolated, like you're describing, just the anticipation of seeing your counselor could almost actually, you know, it's some buoyancy to bring you up a little bit because you're going to make a connection. Somebody's going to be there for you. So I don't know what the losses have been, or you said a lot of difficult things, but this could very easily been just, just feelings about the last year that haven't been processed yet. And you need a space for those. And so I would, even if it doesn't come up, I would go to my counselor and say, I find myself like just getting sad for quote, no reason but begin to look at these life events that could have triggered this. And the other thing that I want you to go think about is this, that when you said, I said, ask you about close friends. So that kind of doesn't exist right now. That in itself is a loss. Even if it wasn't like you had friends and you lost them. Here's a really powerful verse from Proverbs. It says that, Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. Now, why do I quote that one? Because because hope deferred making the heart sick, that's kind of like a little little prescription for, for depression. And hope, see, we as humans, we need connection and support from more than just one person. And when we don't have it, even if we're not consciously thinking about it or wanting it, our system is wanting it. It's like the, like if you hit the power button on your cell phone when you get off a plane, it's searching for a connection. There's a chip inside of us that's always longing for a sense of community and belongingness. And when we don't have it, then daily we're going through a little bit of a loss. And sometimes it's just the emotional isolation that can be producing that kind of triggering for that. And secondly, you're in a pandemic where the normal people that you would run into, even without friends, but you have more interactions than you're having now. So I wish we had, you know, a long time to unpack everything that's happened in the last year or two, <clears throat> but you do have a counselor and I, I, um, you know, really suggest talking to her about that and trying to f- figure out, you know, A, what have I lost or what's hurt that I haven't processed yet? And B, I need to build a support system. Help me to figure out how to do that and maybe join some groups or other kind of things that are structured. So thank you for your call. My heart goes out to you. One more thing I would uh, I would put in there, you know, sometimes unexplained crying 
unexplained sadness. Also, you know, connected with sometimes anxiety, it can be in the picture. Um, sometimes that's a symptom of, of clinical depression. And, and you may have some, you know, it may be good for you to go talk to your doctor because sometimes unexplained, that's what they, they describe it, you know, in the books, unexplained crying spells, like they just come, this mood of sadness, that really can be a biochemical imbalance. And that can come from, you know, kind of our, our brain chemistry in some ways, serotonin and other systems. This is sort of good. I would go, I'd go talk to your doctor and say, I've been having this sadness. It could be hormonal. It could be thyroid. There's a lot of stuff. I really would want you to get the medical aspects of this checked out as well. Okay. Sorry you're feeling that way. I know many people listening are too. Um, many of you, you know, we'll never hear from you, but at least you're here with us. We might hear from you um, if you put a comment up there. But if you are feeling that way, go over that checklist that I just gave. You know, look at, could there be something biological going on? It's possible. You know, there's a lot of, a lot of systems in, in the human physiology that actually have emotional symptoms to them. You know, all the intricate system, <laughs> I can't even say that word today, all of your hormones, all of that stuff, you know, our brain chemistry, our blood sugar systems, you know, there's just so many, so many things that affect sadness and also agitation and also were some thoughts and a bunch of stuff. So sometimes if you can't explain this and what you're doing isn't working, go talk to your doctor about it because your doctor probably could look at some systems in there that may be causing this. And then otherwise, let's look at how isolated am I? How powerless do I feel? How helpless do I feel? How do I feel about processing the negative stuff? Do I have a place to do that? My pain, my failures? The hurts. Maybe I've gone through abuse or trauma. Have I gotten that out of my system? How do I feel about fulfilling? You know, one of the areas of loss we can live with sometimes is lost dreams. I haven't been able to accomplish some of my longings in life, my dreams. I, I want this kind of work or this kind of hobby or this kind of church or this kind of career or these goals hope deferred makes the heart sick so maybe we need to look at that aspect of our lives sometimes as well a lot to talk about way more than we can talk about in an hour i wish i could stay here with you um you got you know there's a lot of people here lined up bonnie from oakland your husband's a hoarder she moved out Hoarding is a tough deal. I hope that he is getting uh, some help. Um, generally, we don't see hoarders self-correct. They're driven by um, a lot of anxiety disorders a lot of times, a lot of loss disorders a lot of times, but they need help. I hope he is, is getting some help. Lots of calls. Um, wish I could talk to all of you. It's hard. Hard stuff we talked about. Here's the good news. Hard stuff doesn't have to be permanent stuff. All of us go through seasons, some more than others. Sometimes that season of hard life started for somebody the day they, the day they hit the planet. If that's been your story, you were born into a situation with the deck stacked against you. You may be struggling now and not many ways is that your fault. I mean, let's say you might've done some stuff from that background that have hurt you or got addicted or got into bad relationships or whatever. But as we've heard on this program previously with other callers, um, whatever that caused you to do, that's okay. All of us have, looking back, failure. All of us have gone down wrong paths. What matters is where we find ourselves today. 
And if you've come from a deprived background, emotionally, relationally, maybe family of origin, we don't get to choose that. But as we get older and more mobility and more options are available, we can choose to walk towards those options. And sometimes the only option we can choose to walk towards is a helpline. Do that. We talked about earlier, when you can't pull something off on your own, make the first step, not trying again when you're not able to do it and repeating failure. Make the first step calling somebody that helps people who are in that scenario. Join a support group. Call a pastor. Call a counselor. Call your rabbi. Call a health center that has a support system for for families of people with mental illness. Maybe you're having to deal with that. But don't try to do it on your own. I'm telling you, this life was not designed to be lived in a vacuum with our being self-help experts. Sometimes people say to me, oh, so you write self-help book. I, I go, no, I don't. There's no such thing as self-help. Either I need help that I can't provide or I'm carrying around help that I can give to others. But if we need help, an empty empty car out of gas isn't going to give itself some self-gas. So reach out. Find a community. <coughs> Excuse me. One of the things I love about Boundaries Not Me, go look at it, the communities that are formed in there. And reach out also, like, to gain information. Let's not use our own closed system to try to solve problems. As Einstein told us, you know, it's not the thinking that got us into this problem. It's not going to be the thinking that's going to get us out of it. And many times, the thing that's going to get out of it is not going to come from me because I've, 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 many times in my life, I've gotten to the end of my wisdom. I've gotten to the end of my answers, and I got to call somebody who's got some. So, we are glad for you that have called us. We thank God for you. We pray for you and the people. I've seen this on Facebook and the other platforms. They're supportive as well. Don't do this life alone. I don't know why I'm saying this over and over again today, but. It must be needed because we're saying it because you've called us, you've told us about it, and I've seen it, and I've experienced it. Don't do this by yourself. It may be the hardest thing that you've ever done right now today to call a helpline or to call a pastor, a rabbi, a teacher, a friend, a neighbor, a therapist, a psychiatrist. Do it. Take that step. And if that one doesn't work, take another one. Sometimes we get bad ones. First number doesn't work. Let's call it second, the third, the fourth until we do. Okay, this is the Dr. Cloud Show. Love it that you guys have joined us. A couple of things in closing here. Um, I always say, you know, we started this a few weeks ago. It's been so much fun. I've really enjoyed you guys and y'all have enjoyed each other, I think. But we're going to be able to stay here only if the show builds an audience. So we need you to share it. Share it with your friends. If you hear a call that relates to a friend, say, hey, listen to this 20 minutes in. You know, let's get people following this and also kind of talking to each other. And then as well, please, please join our sponsor at Boundaries.me. Go on there. Look at Boundaries.me. Look what's available there. Become a subscriber and join this movement of people that are coming together and taking those next growth steps. Okay. Good to see y'all. And we will be here again, one o'clock Pacific time tomorrow. And until then, God bless and have a great day.